Well, that's the secretary's office and the mayor's email address. Okay. So that was the mayor's office. Hello, do you speak English? I've been asked to call this morning to make an appointment with the uh, anti di Marco. Tetarti, Kala. Tiora. Octo, Nisi. I'll put this really, really simply. Yeah. The plan is in two parts. The first part is to collect and redistribute Corfu's heritage seeds and food plants. Το πρώτο σχέδιο είναι να διατηρηθούν και να διατηρηθούν όλοι οι σπόροι αυτοί που έχουν να κάνουν με βρώσιμα ήδη, έτσι. Κόφου is to own everything. Ε, όλα αυτά θα είναι σε φανή που στην Κέρκυρα. And it's all to be voluntary basis. Και όλα αυτά θα είναι σε θεωρητική βάση που θα γίνουν. The second part will be an education program. Το δεύτερο κομμάτι θα είναι εκπαίδευση των ανθρώπων που θα έχουν να διατηρήσουν τους σπόρους ώστε να διατηρηθεί αυτή η through other experts around the island, how to plant a seed, how to grow a tree, how to um, graft, all the systems. So people now know that they've got the seeds, what to do with them. To do this, I need to gain massive awareness and public trust. Αυτό για να καταφέρει χρειάζεται να έχει την προσοχή του κόσμου και την την ουσιαστικά την δημοσιοτήτα την θετική όμως, δηλαδή αυτό θέλει κάποιες φορείς που να είναι σοβαρή και επίσημη και να λάβει όλο η κύριμα τι σοβαρή διάσταση να το πάρει αυτό σοβαρά. You have no idea how nervous I've been about this meeting. The reason is. The success of this project is only going to succeed or fail in this room. Um, excuse me. I want to collect all of the heritage seeds of Corfu. From every village. Document them, grow them, and then hand them back to everybody. For asking the people of Corfu to have a meeting with me to organize how we can structure this. And no problem. I don't know if you're here. No problem. No problem. Anyway, so now we're heading to the Department of Foreign Languages to see if we can get a translator to make this show happen in Greek subtitles. Like the place. Yeah, look on the the wall. You see? You know the permaculture teaches about building. That could be fixed if you put the insulation on the outside. Yeah. Because then you've got the thermal mass on the inside, the insulation there, and you don't get hot condensation. Yeah, okay. I have just walked into the building. I met up with this gentleman who is what the president of the department of Department of uh, Translation and Interpreting. Yorios Mikalipoulos. Mikalakopoulos. Excuse me, Yorios Mikalakopoulos. Exactly. And um, I mentioned the idea about saving the seeds and he's keen to do it. And so we'll see how we go if we can find anybody within the department that can help out with the translation. So, Christo. Και εγώ σε ευχαριστώ που κάνεις αυτή τη δουλειά. Yeah. Saving planet. Saving the planet. In a sense, it is. Very yes. 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 And saving most, the most important thing. Food. Sorry, can you keep it up? Keep it up. That's the best.
Corfu has so many places with yes. views like this, it's stunning. Can you believe such luck? Just bump in to the head man of the department. over to people that look after seed storage and collection and we then give them back to the Corfuettes. We give them back to you so everybody in Corfu now has heritage seed. Everybody can taste the carpuzzi and the peponi, like the rock melon, the watermelon, the tomato. As permaculture is a system that is ecologically sustainable. That means every year your garden gets better and economically profitable which means they minimise energy and effort to produce things. You actually have to work less in a permaculture system than you do in normal farming or normal agriculture. Um, they use natural systems. Uh, so it is a system that is incorporating the best the world has to offer. And now, because permaculture is all over the world and technology is so easily available, everybody's sourcing from everybody and we're learning very quickly how to grow and how to develop gardening systems that are um, just so much better than they ever were for the environment. And permaculture, you can make a statement like this, which is a true statement. You can solve all the world's problems in a garden. The pollutions that come into your, your area, you can clean them up in a garden. Pollutants from your household, from your kitchen waste, because we recycle everything. We use all the paper in the house in the garden. Uh, the plastics you get recycled, so if you're at home or if you're on the streets, don't throw anything out, don't throw your cigarette butts away, do the right thing. These things go into our drains, they go out into the oceans, they go into the fish, we eat the fish and we're basically poisoning ourselves. And permaculture looks at how to recycle everything, how to include all of the elements, we're talking the animals, and not only farm animals, but we're talking reptiles, lizards, snakes, and I know we're scared of snakes, but we've got ways of keeping them away if we choose to. We want to introduce insects. We actually want predator insects to get rid of our bad insects, and we create a habitat for them. We harness in permaculture the sun, and the sun um, is pretty interesting because we also look at housing and development and how in different environments, from extremely cold climates to extremely hot climates to humid climates, what type of housing, how you can build a house using permaculture principles, how you can use the sun not only to heat your house, but how you can use the sun to cool your house. Permaculture principles are adopting all these technologies. So when you take on permaculture, it's not just about growing well, it's about the entire ecological thing. It's about man interacting with man. We study this. It's about man interacting with the environment. Uh, it's about what our needs are and how we can make everything in the system all work and grow together. This is permaculture. This is something that I would like to be able to teach. People that say, yes, I would like to permaculture design my property, which will involve a little bit of money on your behalf. You will probably need to dig in swales. That's a contour ditch or should I say a ditch that's built on contour around the landscape. Swales are designed to hydrate your system. They're designed to put water back into the ground. They're designed to actually grow trees. I will help you design food forests. So you walk outside and you have all the food that you need outside in your place. I will help you design zoning to say the systems that you need to go to the most are closest to your house. The systems you need to go to the least, like forest, big forest for, for really strong trees, for building material. 
Um, those the furthest away, those are zoned out further. We'll talk about um, putting in different levels of species and lots and lots of species. We don't do monoculture crops. And I'll give you an example of where permaculture is different to normal gardening. Everybody now is digging the ground up. They turn it over, they plant the seeds, they water it with lots and lots of water, they then spray with poisons, they artificially fertilize. Now, let's start from the front. The front is you dig up the ground. There is proof that plants have a greater DNA system than humans. They're more evolved. Plants can actually talk to each other. Plants communicate with each other. There have been cases in Australia and in Africa where trees that get attacked by locusts are oozing out a material that is not tasty to the locusts. And the plant's response to being eaten is saying, I'm going to put this poison out, die. What happens is up to 50 kilometres away, the plants are actually receiving the message from the ones that are being attacked and start to ooze this chemical. So they're talking to each other. How do they do it? They do it in the micro net of fungus underground. So the biology of the ground is really important. And when you dig it up, you turn it to the sun, all the animals, all the microbiology, all the fungus is killed. Now, why does our garden grow so well when you dig it? Because when this dies, it put nitrogen in the soil. That fertilizes the soil, but it doesn't fix the soil. It actually strips it and kills it. There are ways of fertilizing using plants, naturally. You can also use the animals to help fertilize. And when you grow a crop, you grow a crop of trees or fruit or vegetables and next to it you grow a crop of fertilizing trees that help nutri nutri to help fix the soils, nitrogen and fertilize it. The next thing is after digging, what permacultures do, if you dig, you cover. You protect that ground from the sun. You protect that microbiology from the sun. Yes, you've softened it. Yes, you can plant your seeds, but cover it. When it's covered with straw mulch, um, then that is now protected. It holds moisture in the ground, it lets the microbiology still live and the health of the soil stays there. Second, they use sprays to get rid of insects. These sprays are there because they plant monoculture. Monoculture is one plant. Think of yourself as being a bug that loves eating corn or wheat and it goes, my favourite food is corn and then all it sees is fields and fields of corn. It's going, come on fellas, let's, this is where we're staying, this is a good place. So all the bugs come and infest your property, they eat all your food. Permaculture uses multi-crops. They use from overstory, large trees, to understories, to vines. They use herbs and, and they attract insects and that to kill the bugs, to eat the bugs, to keep them away. And when there isn't a huge monoculture, a huge one crop, mono crop, then you don't get the pest problems. You get some, but those some, you can even say, if we have a particular pest, give it its favorite food, let it go over there and eat. And then you protect yours with natural systems. The next thing we do is we get all of our natural systems in the gardening that we do now. We get all the plants, we chop them down because they grow, all the weeds grow. And then we get those weeds and we burn them. And you go, the charcoal is good for the soil. Yes, there is advantage in putting biochar in the soil. I uh, won't go into that. But there is a lot more advantage of turning that into compost. That compost is now new soil, which gives you another layer of health for your garden. Weeds. You've got to understand something. Weeds are nature's way of healing. Now, when ground is destroyed, when ground is disturbed, you get blackberry bushes and that coming in. And these are big things, but they usually occur where you get a lot of erosion. Their job, their job, what they do in nature is they heal the ground. They stop animals from being able to tread on that ground and destroy it. They stop the erosion. And then they attract with their fruit little birds. The birds come in, the birds eat the fruit, they poop everywhere. That poop fertilizes the ground. The wind comes and hits the plant. The plant then slows the wind and it drops all the nutrients from the air into the ground. The leaf litter, other seeds, and then you've got this layer now under these trees of fertile, rich, seed-bearing material. Then trees, small ones, start to grow and they will grow up through the bushes, through the weeds. 
and then they will shade the weeds and the weeds will die off and next thing you have trees growing and your, your landscape is healed. We've learnt this in permaculture, we've learnt how to fast track it. So if there is an erosion problem we can fix it. You can tell by the type of weed what sort of problem you have in your landscape. If you have thistles and these thistles are growing up all around the place, it tells you that the ground is not giving off its iron or its copper and it's usually because the area has been overgrazed. Too many animals eating the grass, they're trampling the ground, they're compacting it. The roots of these thistles go down and they crack the ground, they expand it so they break up compaction. They suck up the iron and the copper into their system and when they die they release it to nature. So the thistle is also a healing plant. We get them, we chop them off, we kill them. So using nature's natural ways of healing, fast tracking it, permaculture does all that for you. So now in permaculture we don't have a big insect problem. We don't have the degeneration of our soil by digging it up and leaving it. Our soil actually gets healthier by using mulch. We also use worms. And I'll get into that another time. So permaculture is a system designed to make the land better. And I'm going to teach this by showing these properties that I'm going to do for free, what we do to set them up, how the systems work and we'll watch them evolve, we'll watch them grow. We'll also collect all of Corfu's seeds, all of the heritage seeds, not new introduced seeds. So we're going to get the heritage seeds, the stuff that belongs traditionally to Corfu. We're going to document it all. They've done this in uh, New Zealand near Australia. Every new citrus tree has been documented. The species, who brought it in, where it landed, how long it's been growing for, what they've done with the graftings and all of the other systems in planting. And it's all documented and they've kept the seeds, the heritage seeds for New Zealand's future. Corfu is losing its heritage. Give us a chance. Give us a chance to get back the heritage, to hold on to it. Once we've got these seeds, we've written down all of the details on them. We then hand them over to people that look after seed storage and collection. And we then give them back to the Corfuettes, we give them back to you so everybody in Corfu now has heritage seeds. Everybody can taste the carpuzzi and the peponi, like the rock melon, the watermelon, the tomatoes, all the fruit that used to taste so fantastic, like 50 years ago when I first came to Greece. In fact, it was probably 40 years ago when I first came to Greece. I could not get over the flavor. There are pockets of those seeds still in existence and with proper growing systems, we can all have them. So help me get a group together. I actually want to get a, a group of volunteers, please phone me, um, that are going to help go to all of the villages on the island, create drop-off points where people can give them things and we'll start with clippings from grapevines. I would love to know and collect and get growing a whole set of heritage and traditional grapevines because they're cutting them soon. After all, it's coming into winter. We get this group together to organise this. We organise seed collection and data farming. I will do the permaculture design for free and document it. It's all open plan. And we'll put that on bi-weekly television so everybody can see it happening. My name is Kerry Ferides, in Greek, Kosta Niki Ferides. My phone number, Exinda Nya, Saranda Akto, Hilia, Exinda Nya. That's 6948 1069. Let's get a group together. I will probably also need help in organising some Corfu database that we can put this on and everybody that learns things can go to this database, add to it, learn from it. And we, this is all Corfu's. This is going to be for all of Corfu forevermore, for our generations of students, kids, everybody to come. Um, I hope you see what I'm trying to do and please help me organise this. And I want to thank Corfu. TV for allowing me to put this program on um, as the, the trailer, as the first of hopefully many uh, to do with educating and uh, helping people keep what really belongs here in Corfu. Thank you. Yeah.
Από τη στο πετσινάρι σε φύνο ακρογιάλι να σου παίξω φύνο παγκλάμα. Delta O, M, A, Delta, Alpha, Evdomada. In English, uh, Environmental Week. The second part of this is going to be education, to get people that are professional in, for example, seed balls, to show us how these are done, to then, when people are then given back the seeds of Corfu, we'll do the same sort of thing as Peliti, if not with Peliti. Um, so when we hand the seeds out to anybody and everybody, um, they didn't know how to grow them. Ουσιαστικά είναι να μαζέψει παλιές παλιούς κόσμους από παλιές πικιλίες και να κάνει ένα πρόγραμμα αντιλοπικό πάνω σε αυτό. So, my plan is to um, to get people that are, have skills in areas, for example, this is the Fukuoka system, isn't it? Yeah. Um, to be able to show us what they do and educate us to how to grow the seeds that will be given, the heritage seeds of Corfu. Okay. Because, so the plan is to, to not only collect the seeds, but then do an education program on what we can do with our new seeds. Um, ο σκοπός δεν είναι μόνο να μαζέψει τους φόρους, αλλά να κάνει και ένα πρόγραμμα επιμορφωτικό προς το πώς θα τους καλλιρίζουν αυτούς τους φόρους. Ευχαριστώ. Έχω τον τέγκη τον. Έχω κύπο πάνω στο ρουφ, ρουφι. Ταράτσα. Ταράτσα, ναι. Πολύ μικρό, αλλά έχω λίγο. Θα προσπαθήσω αυτό. Ναι, ναι. Θα προσπαθήσω να βάλω κάτι στον τόπο, για κάποιο γράς. Cut some grass and put it on the top. That is so cool. Yes. Just uh, to be uh, wet and uh, grow up faster. We can take our fingers and put them on the top of the pan, in a glass of water. We can cut a little bit of water and a little bit of water that we have. We can take them on the top of the pan, just to keep the water and to keep the water more easily and more easily. And it also protects the microbiology in the soil. Επίσης προστατεύει τους μικροοργανισμούς οι οποίοι βρίσκονται πάνω στο χώμα. Είναι πολύ σημαντικό να How thick should you put this layer? Πόσο ψηλό, πόσο μοντρό πρέπει να είναι αυτό το φόρτο που θα βάλουμε, πόσο πάχος.